right? Shalom. First and foremost, a lot to give all praises and glory and honor to. Say Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Bakash. In the heavenly Father, true name is Yahweh. And his only begotten Son, Bashem, and then Mashiach, Yahweh uh, those are their true names in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, the Bashwan Bash of the Tongue. And I say Barak Abam to the uh, elders, Barak and Barak, and I say Shalom. Out uh, here once again on the highways and edges, the uh, chief place of concourse, and the Wadi Ha Bashim and Hashem, as always, you know, for giving us the opportunity chance to come after and do so. Uh, lifting up the names of the Ha Bashim and Hashem. And then uh, Barak Abam to the uh, elders, Barak and Barak, and I say Shalom. So out here uh, once again for the third time on the highways and edges, the chief place of concourse. Downtown Chicago, uh, September the uh, 26th, 2024. And the Wadi Ha'ba as always, for giving us an increase in opportunity chance to come out and do so. Lift up names of the Ha'ba Yasha. And once again, for walking from to the uh, elders, for acting on Akwa, and I say Shalom. I'm going to charge my phone up for a second. Use the uh, scriptures. Lock you for the momentary pause. Get into that uh, second edge, 16th chapter. This is uh, the book of second edge, chapter 15, verse um, the second edge, 16, verse 1. So lock you. It says, uh, Woe be unto Babylon in Asia, woe be unto Egypt and Syria. Why woe means uh, great stress. So woe be unto Babylon, Asia, woe be unto Egypt and Syria. Second edge of 16 verse 2, third of your sails of cloth of sack and air of the way of the ship for your distress and the soft your distress will take me. Second edge of 16 verse 3, the sword is set upon you who may approach it and who may turn it back. I mean second edge of 16 verse 3, I'm gonna read that again, it's locked A sword is set upon you who may turn it back. Second edge of 16 verse 4, a fire is set among you who may approach it. Second edge of 16 verse 5, the breeze, the plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive it away? Verse 6, may any man drive away a hunger line in the wood, or many one quench the fire of the stumble, for they have begun to burn. Second edge of 16 verse 7, may one turn again the arrow that is shot of a uh, strong archer. Second edge of 16 verse 8, the mighty power of the album sent the plagues. Uh, who is he that can try to play? Like the plagues of the heavenly body, how from the ancient times all that's modern times. But who is he that can try to play? Second edge 16 and verse 9, and the fire should go forth from his wrath, like the wrath of the heavenly father. And who is he that may quench it? Second edge 16 and verse 10, he shall pass like who shall not fear? He shall thunder, who shall not be afraid. Second edge 16 and verse 11, it reads, and the power of Yahweh shall uh, threaten. And who shall not be utterly beaten to powder in his presence? Second edge of 16 verse 12, the earth quickly, and the foundations thereof, and the seas arise of the waves from the deeps, and the waves of it are trophy, and the fishes thereof also before Yahweh, and before the glory of his power. Second edge of 16 verse 13, for scroll in his right hand, that then if the bow, the arrows, like those missiles, and that shooteth are sharp, and shall not miss, when it begins to be shot in the ends of the world. Second edge of 16 verse 14, behold, the plagues are sent, and shall not return again until they come upon the upon the earth. Second edge of 16 verse 15. Uh, second edge of 16 verse 15. It says a fire is kindled and shall not be put out to consume the foundations of the earth. Second edge of 16 verse 16. Like as a arrow like those missiles, which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backwards. Even so the plagues shall be sent upon the earth and shall not return again. Second edge of 16 verse 17. Woe was me, woe was me, who would deliver me in those days. These are the modern days of our uh, Ezra. Second edge of 16 verse 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mournings, and the beginnings of famines and famine, and the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evil, which I fear this evil shall come. Second edge 16, verse 19. Behold, famine and plague and tribulation, and sick as sports are for the men. Second edge 16, verse 20. But for these things they shall not return for their wickedness, nor be mindful always, nor be always mindful of the scourges. 
the second edge of 16 and verse 21. Behold, virtuous shall be so for a chief upon the earth, that they shall dig themselves to the pigs. Even then shall even shall grow upon the earth with sword, famine, and great confusion. This is uh, second edge of 15 and right, second edge of 16 and verse 22. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish from famine, and the others shall the hunger shall be sore scorn. Second edge of 16 and verse 23. And the day shall pass out as they don't, and there shall be no man left to come for For the earth shall be waste, uh, waste, and the city shall be cast down. Verse 24. And there shall be no man left to the earth, and the soil. Second edge of 16 verse 25. And the tree shall give it fruit, and who shall tread them, who shall gather them. It says, uh, verse 26. And the grapes shall reap it, who shall tread them, for all the places shall be destined of man. Second edge of 16 verse 27. So that one man should desire to see another and to hear his voice. Oh, that's going to be happening these last days. Because, like, that was taking place in ancient times in Ezra times. So, this is going to be taking place in modern day Ezra spiritually in modern times. Because there's no new thing in the sun, like it says in Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. 2nd Ezra 16 verse 28. For of a city there should be ten left, or two of the field which hid themselves in the dip, rose and clefts on the rocks. 2nd Ezra 16 verse 29. As in the march of the olives upon the big tree. But there are three or four left olives. Verse 30. For as when a vineyard is gathered, there shall be less some left clusters of them that did the seek from the vineyard. Second Acts 16, verse 31. Even so in those days there shall be three or left uh, by them that search the house of the sword. Just like that was happening in ancient times, we're going to see this in modern times. Second Acts 16, verse 32. And the earth shall be laid waste, and the fields of the world shall wax old. And her ways and all her paths shall go forth thorns because no man shall travel there through. Second edge 16 verse 33, the virgin shall mourn and have no bridegrooms. The woman shall mourn and have no husbands, and the daughter shall mourn and have no helpers. Verse 34, and the war shall their bridegrooms be destroyed, and the husbands shall perish from them. Verse 35, hear now these days and understand if these servants of power like this, like this, God shall not oppress power. Second edge of uh, 16 verse 36, and it reads, behold the word of the hour Receive it, believe not the gods of whom the house speak. This is 2nd Edge 16 verse 37. Behold, the plagues are drawn now and are not slack. Christ, the plagues of the heavenly father are drawn now and they are definitely are not slack. 2nd Edge 16 verse 38. As when a woman with child from the fourth and ninth month, break it for her son, was two or three hours her birth, uh, great pains, and passed from womb. And this is a uh, right, great pains, and passed from womb when, when the pains. When the child comes forth, they slack not a moment. All right, so these birth pains is not going to slack for a moment when the planet Earth. This is 2nd Edge 16, verse 39. It says, Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth. The world shall mourn, uh, the world shall mourn, and shall sorrow shall come upon it on the other side. All right, that's only going to increase. Which we're saying right now, but it's only going to increase. This is 2nd Edge 16, verse 40. For my people and my word will make ready for my battle. And those evil shall be as a pit upon the earth. All right, so. It's going to be evils increasing, and then we will have to be pilgrims upon the earth, just like our forefathers was. That's how it's going to be in these uh, modern times. Other very important serious times we're about to enter into it once it comes into full effect. Second Edge 16, verse 41. He that settled, let him that he that fleeth away, and he that buyeth as one shall that will lose. Verse 42 of Second Edge 16, verse 42, and it reads, He that occupied merchandise after he had not profited by it, and he that buyeth as he shall not dwell therein. Verse 43, and they that sow as he shall not reap, so also he that planted the vineyard as he shall not gather the grapes. This is uh, for the uh, second edge of 6 and verse 44. They that marry as they shall not get no children, as they marry not as the widows. This is uh, second edge of 6 and verse 45. It, it says, Sabachia. Second edge of 6 and verse 45, and therefore they that labor, labor in vain. Verse 46, but the stranger shall reap their fruits as for the goods of their houses. And take their children captive for their captivity, and the famine shall hit their children. Verse 47 The day that occupy the merchandise for robbery, the more they deck their cities and their houses and their possessions and their own persons. The second edge of 16, verse 48 The more I will be angry with them, for their sins said the hour. And this is uh, second edge of 16, verse 49 Like as a poor envy of a right, honest, and virtuous woman. Uh, second edge of 16, verse 50 So shall righteousness and iniquity when she deck herself. Shall accuse her to her face. When she cometh, they shall defend him that diligently seek and search out all sin upon the earth. Second Edge of 16, verse 51. 
It says, uh, therefore be ye not like their it says, therefore be ye not like their unto, nor the works thereof. Verse fifty two second at six hundred verse fifty uh fifty two slot here. But yet a little bit. <coughs> Second chapter 16 verse 52. But yet in a little while iniquity shall be taken out of the earth, and righteousness shall reign among you. I don't want to lie Second Edge chapter 15 verse 53. Let not the sinner say that he had not sinned, but your house shall burn coals of fire upon his head, which said before your house thy power is it says uh in his glory I have not sinned. Second Edge 16 verse 54. Behold, Yahweh knoweth all the works of men, and they have machinations, they have thoughts in the heart, which right heart your mind. Verse 55, which spake about a word that the earth be made, and it was made, that the heaven be made, it was created. Verse 56, and his word was the stars made, and he knoweth the number of them. Verse 57, second chapter 16, verse 57, it reads, search about the deeps and the treasure thereof, he that measured the sea and what he had taken. And this is uh, second chapter 16, verse 58, he shut the sea in the midst of the waters. It says, with his word hath he hanged the earth upon the waters. This is uh, 2nd Edge 16 verse 59. He spread it out the heavens like a bolt and upon the waters have he found it. 2nd uh, Edge 16 verse 60. In the desert have he made springs of water in the pools and the tops. The mountains that flood may pour down from the high rocks to make the So rock as the high rocks to water the earth. 2nd Edge 16 verse 61. He made man put his heart in the midst of his body. He gave him breath and life and understanding. This is out of the second edge of 16 and verse 62. Being in the spirit of Almighty how thy power which made all things, for I created the heavens and the earth with the heavenly Father. And search about all hidden things and the secrets of the earth. Second edge of 16 and verse 63. Surely he know <coughs> Second edge of 16 and verse 63. Surely he knoweth your offenses and what you think your heart is right and hard your mind. Even them that would sin would have hid their sins. This is second edge of 16 and verse 64. Therefore, as he how exactly search out all your works and will put you all to shame. Verse 67, uh, 2nd Edges 16, verse 65, to read Salakia. And when your sins are brought forth, you shall be ashamed before men. Your own sins shall be accused in that day. Shout out to that brother, Yahweh, though, when the prophets on the scene just come between. 2nd Edges 16, verse 66. What will you do, or how will you hit your sins before Yahweh and his angels? 2nd <coughs> Edges 16, verse 67. Behold, Yahweh himself is a judge. Fear him, leave off your sins, and give your iniquities to men for more. But them so ever, so shall Yahweh lead you forth, and deliver you from all trouble. This is uh, second chapter 6 and verse 68. But behold, the morning wrath that were both to his kingdom of you, and they shall take away certain of you, and fit you be an idol of the things are offered unto idols. Second chapter 16 and verse 69. And they that consent unto them shall be had in Jerusalem, and reproach and trod in the foot. Second chapter 16 and verse 7. But there shall be in every place in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that be out. Why that great insurrection is going to That's going to occur in these times. It's going to come into full effect. Second chapter 16 and verse 71. They shall be like mad men, fair enough. That's calling and destroying those that be out. And second chapter 16 and verse 72. But they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Verse 73. They shall be known for my chosen. They shall be tried as gold in the fire. Out of a rock side. You know that would be that would be part of those men you know that endure to the end that be part of the chosen out of our rock side you know it says uh second edge 16 verse 73 then shall be known who are my chosen and they should try as go to fire out of our rock side that would be part of that clothe the uh elders of you know and akim the elders of akim that's got throughout the four corners of earth out of our rock side that would be part of that you know it says then shall be known who are my chosen they should be tried as go to fire why uh, Ecclesiastes the second chapter he explains that in Zechariah the uh Zechariah 13 verse 9 and many more scriptures that reference that very important matter you know. Second Edges 16 verse 74 Hear hear O ye my beloved say it, I will behold the days are trouble are in hand but I will deliver you from the same I don't want rock side that will be delivered from the same you know clearly uh elders while Aki and like minded brothers and sisters as well too I don't want rock side second edge 16 verse 75 be ye not afraid neither doubt for Yahweh is your God Right, so the more we trust in the heavenly Father, he, will, he shall direct our paths. So we more, the more we acknowledge the heavenly Father, how he shall direct our paths. You know, like it says in Proverbs, the third chapter, second that pertains to the children of Israel, the Israelites. Second, Exodus six, and verse seventy-six, and the God of them will keep my commandments and precepts, right? Israelites, see if you're out, right? Keep the commandments of the heavenly Father, how he wants Israelites. It says, the God of them will keep my commandments and precepts, see if you're out. Let not your sins weigh you down. 
let not your iniquity slip in sales. Right, so it's like the Abba Shemashah says, let not your sins weigh you down, let not your iniquity slip in sales. You know? That pertains to us, Israel, especially these last days. He says, uh, 2 Ephesians 16, verse 77. Woe be unto them that are bound with sins, and is covered with their iniquities. Like as a field is covered with the bushes, and the path thereof with the thorns that no man may travel their roof. 2 Ephesians 16, verse 78. It is left undressed, and is cast into, uh, being, it is left undressed, and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. Time. And this is uh, the book of 2 Ephesians. 15 and verse 1. It says, uh, Behold, speak thou of the ears of my people the words of prophecies, which I put in thy mouth, saith thou. Right, so these are the words of prophecies that we are speaking unto the children of Israel. You know, telling them in these last days, telling them that they are the children of Israel. You are the chosen people of the Most High, Yahweh, thy power. The Lord, the King, the Son, the King, the men and women, the children, you know. Whether they hear, whether they forbear, you know. So this is where we are speaking the words of prophecies unto the children of Israel, you know, telling them what's taking place in the world today, what's about to come very soon, for them to return back to the heavenly body, Yahweh. Come back to your heritage, your culture, your customs, your language before we enter into that very important science. So, this is what we are speaking the words of prophecies unto the children of Israel as the Heavenly Father ordered us to come out here on the highways and edges. And he's put, he put this version on now as being the servants of the prophets and messengers of the ambassador in these last days. And this is uh, second Ephesians chapter 15, verse 2. As we call them to be written in paper, they are faithful and truth. Christ the words of the Heavenly Father now, when it's written in paper, they are faithful and truth in these last days. It's like an ancient time. 2 Ephesians chapter 15, verse 3. Build not the imagination against them. Let not the credulity of them trouble you and speak against them. Right. The scoffers and mockers of the last days, like it says in 2 Peter 3, verse 3. So we're not uh, deterred by that. We're not phased by that. 2 Ephesians chapter 15, verse 4. For all the unfaithful shall be I and unfaithful to write the noun of 2 Ephesians chapter 15, verse 5. And it reads, For behold, Yahweh. It says, for, you, for behold, Yahweh will bring plagues upon the world, the sword of famine and destruction. Right, that's going to come in the last days, and that's what we're seeing, the sword of the to increase. Second, Hebrews 15, verse 6. For which we have received the glory of the whole earth, and the whole works of fields still to today. Second, Hebrews 15, verse 7. It says, therefore, said Yahweh, verse 8, I will hold my tongue no more as the testament witness, which they profane and commit. Neither I will suffer nothing of those things in which they reap and exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and the righteous blood crowds me. The souls that are just complaining the tanks, right? The souls that are just complaining the tanks, and still to this day. Uh, second Ephesians chapter 15 and verse 9. It says, uh, Therefore, say unto how I will show you the wisdom received unto me. Uh, he says, I will say unto me all of this above from under. And this is uh, second Ephesians 15 and verse 10. It says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. And I will not suffer them now the way of the land of Egypt. Right? This is a uh, modern day Egypt. It's like ancient Egypt. So there's a new thing in the sun. Second Ephesians 15 and verse 11. But I will bring them out of the mighty hand, and they scratch my arm and smite each of the plagues as before. And I will destroy all the lands of it. Second Ephesians 15, verse 12, Egypt shall mourn, and the fountains and the foundations shall be smitten with the plagues and punishment, and the house shall burn in hunger. This is uh, second Ephesians 15, verse 13. They that tip the ground shall mourn, but the, but the sea shall fail, for the blast of hell, and of the fifth constellation. Second Ephesians 15 and verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Right, the ship of the Lord, woe, woe is great distress. Second Ephesians 15, verse 15, and the sword of destruction for all nine. And if one people should stand up and fight against the other source, and they like his mind and source of the So we're going to see seditions of all men, and they will know. Second Ephesians 15, verse 16, for there should be sedition of all men, and they will know. They should not be lost for the king, or should be lost for the king. So we're going to have the citizens rise up against each other. It's only going to continue to increase. This is uh, 2 Ephesians 15, verse 17. A man should desire to go into a city, should not be able to. Right, it's going to be a time where a man should desire to go into a city, should not be able to, due to the uh, martial law, state of emergencies, FEMA pain, concentration pains, the time of drinking trouble, the very perilous times, the pushing of the MOTB or RFID, CHIV. So it's going to be a time where a man should desire to go into a city, should not be able to. Hey, it's going to be like that. Uh, <laughs> It's going to be like that TV show, Last of Us. That's how it's going to be in the last days. Hey, just like, uh, what's that, uh, Fallout? It's going to be like that in the last days as well, too. You know? and this is what we out here prophesying about war, evil, and pestilence. And this is, uh, so, hey, it's going to be a time where the man should desire to go into a city and should not give it to him. This is second Ephesians chapter 15, verse 19. The man should have a pity upon his table. The Lord should destroy their houses. And spoil their goods because of the lack of regulation of vision. Why? Because of the lack of regulation of vision. That's in uh, Matthew 
24 verse 24. In uh, Matthew 24 verse 12. Uh, what's that? So Rock 39 verse 28. So like you said, increasing more and more in these last days. Second, I'll just continue verse 19 and read that in. A man should have pity upon his neighbor, but should destroy the house with the sword is for their rules because of the lack of bread against your patient. Like because of the lack of bread against your patient, it's the times about to enter into. This is what we are uh, more and more and more countless of times out here prophesying about. Even if we say it multiple times over and over again, hey, this is going to be happening in the last age. This is uh, Isaiah, even if you sound like a broken record player, we're going to continue to mention it over and over and over again, you know. Whether they hear or fear, even if we prophesy into the wind, you know, hey, this is going to happen in the last days. Now, this is uh, Isaiah. This is a prophet Isaiah, uh, 19, verse 1. Yeah, this is uh, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 19, verse 1. It says, uh, the burden of Egypt, behold, Yahweh will it for plenty for a plow. Shall come into Egypt, and the idol of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. And the heart of Egypt shall imagine the midst of it. Right, so this is uh, modern day Egypt. So Heavenly Father is going to jack up this uh, modern day spiritual Egypt. Because the uh, chariots of the Heavenly Father is like a whirlwind, as it reads in Isaiah 6, 6, verse 15 to verse 16. And Isaiah 19, verse 1. Because he's going to mess up modern day spiritual Egypt. You know? Just like he jacked up ancient Egypt. Now this modern day spiritual Egypt is going to jack up as well, too. The chariots of the heavenly fathers like a whirlwind. Isaiah 19 and verse 2. And I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptian. And hey, shout out to that boy Yahweh that when the prophets of the seen, the judgment come between you. Isaiah 19 and verse 2. And I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptian. Why? Right, because they're modern day Egyptian against the modern day Egyptians is like North America. Because uh, North America represents uh, modern day Egypt. It says, I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptian. And shall fight upon this earth, upon this table, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. But we say that these things is uh the spiritual music. Into that book of Ecclesiastes. And this is out uh, of book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 8. In the times of love, in the time of peace, A T E, in the time of war, in the time of peace. Our spirit definitely in the time of peace, A T E, all the sins and nicotines is running up. Time of war, wars, 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 uh, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. So we're going to be seeing the uh, great seditions of other nations. So the modern day Egyptian against the modern day Egyptian, city against city, kingdom against kingdom, uh, neighbor against neighbor, and uh, kingdom against kingdom, neighbor against neighbor, brother against brother, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. So as I reference that scripture in Isaiah 19, verse 2, you know, and this is uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, verse 1 verse 9. The thing that has been is that which shall be. That which is done, that which should be done. There is no new thing on the sun, right? So there's no new thing on the sun. Just like it was uh, great seditions, uprisings, other wars, people wars, wars, women's wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines and pests and plagues, just like it was taking place in the ancient times. Now we're going to be seeing this increasingly more and more, more in these last days. So there's no new thing on the sun. Now this is uh, modern day Babylon, modern day Egypt, modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, modern day Tyler and Babylon spiritually, modern days of Noah. Modern days of God, so there's no good thing to say. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 10 is that anything where Floyd may be said, see, this is new. It happened already in old time, which was before us. Right, so this happened in old time, which was before us. And our forefathers, they was on the same prophesy. This is taking place in modern times as well, too. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 1 verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall be any remembrance of things that are to come that shall come, shall come after. Uh, bring up that Jeremiah. Yeah, this is uh, the prophet Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. Yeah, this is uh, the prophet Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. It reads, it says, The prophets that have been before thee and before thee of old prophesied both of those many countries and great kingdoms of war, evil, and pestilence. Right, so this is what we are here prophesying about, of uh, prophesying these great countries and great kingdoms of uh, war, evil, and pestilence. So these uh, war, evil, and pestilence are going to continue to increase, just like it was in ancient times when our forefathers' names on the scene. This is going to be happening more and more in these last days as well, too. Increasing uh, war, evil, and pestilence. And that's what we're seeing in our war today, so it's only going to continue to increase. And this is what we're out here prophesying about. Jeremiah 51 and verse 46. 
It says, uh, least your heart faint and fear for the woman that shall be heard in the land. And a woman should come forth one year after that. Another year should come a woman. By some land rule against root. Right, so by some land rule against root. As we're going to be seeing more and more, uh, increasing more and more in these last days, you know. And this is what we continue out here prophesying about war, people, and pestilence. Now we're getting to that Joel, the uh, third chapter. This is uh, the prophet Joel, chapter 10, verse 1. Yep, yeah, everything good. Prophet Joel, chapter 3. Make sure I'm positioning this right. Uh, Joel, chapter 10, verse 1. For behold, in those days, it said, For behold, in those days, in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, right for Israelites. Joel, chapter 3, verse 2. And I will gather all nations and bring them down to the back of Jehoshaphat with Shehal Shabbat. And I will do with them for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations a part of my land, for as they have part of the heavenly father's land still to this day. And now Jerusalem should be tried down to the Gentiles be fulfilled when we see it in progress as we speak. As it's heating up over there in the valley of Jehoshaphat in Western Asia. And this is uh, Joel chapter 3, verse 3. They have cast lots of my people like the Israelites of our forefathers. They have given a work for the altar, so the girl of wine that they might drink. This is uh, Joel chapter 3, verse 4. Yea, what have you to do with me, O Tidy and Zidon, right behind the heavy nations, and all the coast of Palestine, those Ishmaelites? Will you win to be a recompense if you recompense me swiftly and speedily? And I will tell you a recompense upon your own name. Right, so the heavy ones will turn a recompense upon your own name. Joel chapter 4, they gave the children of Israel, extended to the dead. Because the heavy ones will cry that it's fast, and it's taking place as well, too. So it's speaking to the Israelites. The apple and heavy parts out in this place is people from our forefathers and ancestors all the way down to us. Because we represent this I want to say, my children of Israel. Joel chapter 3, verse 5. Because you have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried them into a temple of the best things, right about four months. His precious gold, his precious Jews, and his rights. Joel chapter 3, verse 6. The children also of Judah, the children of Jerusalem, have you sold unto the Greeks, right? The Edomites. That you might remove them far from their border, right? Still to this day. Joel chapter 3, verse 7. Behold, I will raise them up out of place for that soul. I will tell you a recompense upon your own head. The Bible said, Recompense is definitely upon your own head when you did some children of Israel and the Israelites. Joel chapter 3, verse 8. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah. They shall set them to the Samaritans, to be far off from the house that's spoken. Right? The Samaritans, those people over there in Yemen, the Edomites are going to be sold off to them. Just like you know, these Edomites, they're going to be in the hands of the children of Judah and serve them to slaves and handmaids. Just like they did that to our forefathers and ancestors, that's going to happen towards them. The Edomites are being with the children now. So he that gave into captivity shall go into captivity. He that gave with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience of the faith of the saints. Right, just like it says in Isaiah 14, verse 21, and it prepares us for, uh, for the iniquities of your forefathers, that you might rise, that you now possess the lands and face the, face, face the uh, cities thereof. I try to push and push the scriptures, you know, like it says in Isaiah 14, verse 21, so it's locked in for that. So these uh, Edomites, they go to the children, they're going to get their ultimate recompense what they did to the children of Israel on our forefathers, the ancestors of ancient times, and all the way to modern day times. This is uh, Joel chapter 3 and verse uh, 7. Behold, I will raise them up out of place you have sold them, and I will turn your recompense upon your own head, like that recompense upon your own head. So the heavenly father will raise us up in these last days. When these nations have sold us, he's going to return and reckon this upon your feet. Joel chapter 3, verse 8. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah. They shall send it to the Samaritans, so they can fall off the people who have been outcast for them. Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war. Right, so the heavy fathers proclaim this among the Gentiles, and in preparing them for war, so he's waiting up a mighty man on these common nations, so that all the men of war draw near. That's why the heavenly father slowly but surely gathered the nations up over there to bow to Josephine. And he's pleading with them for his people, for his heritage, Israel. Plead means to judge. That's what the heavenly father is using in progress as we speak. That's why he's setting this up in motion. And that's what we're seeing. So he, he's pleading with them for his people, for his heritage, Israel, uh, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of his land. Okay. Read that again. Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this amongst the Gentiles, prepare war. Wake up the mighty man, let all the men of war draw near and let them come up. Right, so that's why we said Iran is in that warlike mindset. We see Russia in that warlike mindset. We see China in that warlike mindset. 
and all these other nations are in that world like mindset. All the nations are there in the Valley of Jehoshaphat with the heavy bodies gathered up over there in the area. You know, they are in that war like mindset. And he's increasingly making up the mighty men of these armies and nations. And that's why we say Iran versus Israel, that's the idea. What's the idea versus the uh, Israel? Is going against the uh, pro Iranian groups, going against the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, as uh, huge casualties and losses on both sides. And it's only going to continue to increase. So that's why we say it in wars and women's wars, uh, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. So that's only going to continue to increase. Joel there, verse 9, claim you this amongst the Gentiles to fear war. Wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Right, that's what we said. Nuclear estimations and tensions are heating up over there in the Bible. Most of them have been out in the Western Asia. It's only going to continue to increase. Joel chapter 3, verse 10, beat your plowshares and the swords and plunder them into spears, and let the weak stand strong. Right, these are armies of nations. Hey, we start to see let the weak stand strong. We see in uh, North Korea building up their nuclear capability. We see in uh, Iran building up their nuclear capability. We see in the Iranian revolutionary guard corps building up their nuclear capability. All these uh, pro Iranian groups building up their nuclear capability. We see in the Houthi rebels building up, building up their nuclear capability, rising up against their adversaries. Iran, North Korea, and all these other nations building up their nuclear capability. Now we start to see that the weak safe strong. Joel chapter 3, verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come all you heathen, which is the armies of the other nations over in the Valley of Jehoshaphat and Al Shabbat, the Western Asia. And gather yourselves together round about this to cause like mighty ones to come down on your house. Joel chapter 3, verse 12. Let the heathen be awakening, which is the armies of the other nations. Let the heathen be awakening and come up into the Valley of Jehoshaphat with Shah Shabbat. For there I will sit and judge all the heathen round about, like the armies of the other nations. Joel chapter 3, verse 13. Put ye in a sickle for the harvest's rip, coming ye down, for the press is full. And the fast on the floor for their wickedness is great. And this is a uh, prophet Joel, chapter 3, verse 14. For the multitudes and multitudes in the back of the city, but the day of the hour is near the back of the city. Right, so the day of the heavenly father is near the back of the city, about Jehoshaphat and Al Shabbat. All beginning, all about one. Joel, chapter 3, verse 15. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall be drawn to the shine. Joel, 3, verse 16. And the power of Yahweh also shall war at the Zion, and other his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and earth shall be shaken. But the Howard will be the hope of his people, the spread of the children of Israel. Joel chapter 3, verse 17. So shall we know that I am the Howard, your power, and the dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem hold them, and their strength shall pass the word of the Lord. Joel 3, verse 18. And it shall come to pass, in that day when the mountain shall drop down a new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Jews shall flow with waters, and the fountain shall come forth out of the house of the Howard, and shall the waters of Babylon the city. Joel 3, verse 19, Egypt shall be a desolation, and uh, yeah, Egypt shall be a desolation, and Egypt shall be a desolate wilderness. But the boss against the children of Judah, because they had shaken some blood in the land. Joel 3, verse 20, uh, Judah shall dwell forever and ever, and Jerusalem for generations and generations. Joel chapter 3, verse 21, for I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for I have, but there I have not cleansed, for your hour of blood is I want. Hey, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and close it out. Spirit, by grace and mercy of your highway, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Out here again for the third time on the highways ahead to the Chief Blessing Concourse on this uh, September the uh, 26th, 2024, on this uh, Thursday afternoon. And the Wadi Yahweh, 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 as always, for giving us the opportunity chance to come out here to do so, lifting up the names of Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. So with that, I would like to give all praises and glory and honor to And the Heavenly Father, the true name is Yahweh. This unbegotten son, Mahashem, in the name of Mashiach, Yahushak. Uh, those are their true names in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, the Nashua, the Gospel of the Tongue. And I say, Barak to the uh, elders, Barak and Mahakwa. Until next time, I will say, Kwame Asherala, and above all, Shalom.